Hey everybody, tonight we're debating whether or not there is evidence for reincarnation, and we are starting right now with Siddharth and Arjuna. Thanks so much for being with us. The floor is all yours. All right, so I'm Arjuna. Today we're going to be dis- arguing that there is evidence for reincarnation. This is different from proof for reincarnation, so there's a lot of scientific theories which we have evidence for but don't have proof for. Um, the evidence for reincarnation is in the form of children who spontaneously remember past lives. There are also cases of memories of past life that come from hypnosis. These, A lot of them turn out to be garbage. Often it's found that the person, when re-hypnotized and asked where the information came from, read it in a book earlier or something. Uh, but some hypnosis cases are stronger. The researchers, uh, Jim Tucker and Dr. Ian Stevenson, which have looked into this research, prefer to take the children who spontaneously remember past lives because these have a higher rate of quality evidence behind them when investigated. The evidence uh, for these cases, obviously, if it was just memories and nothing more to it, then we would just attribute it to the fanciful imaginations of children or their suggestibility. Uh, But when we have corroborating evidence, then that's no longer the best explanation. So there's three categories of the evidence. The first is uh, memories which can be verified to contain accurate information which the children could not have acquired through ordinary means. So in a couple of minutes, Siddharth is going to give a few examples of this kind of evidence with specific cases. The second category of evidence is birthmarks, which correspond to uh, wounds on the body of the deceased individual whose life matches the description that the child gives. And the third category is behaviors and emotions which match this deceased individual. So when all of these things line up, uh, it's a convergence of evidence which makes reincarnation the best explanation. So, you know, if it was just, for example, in some cases they find, I think there's, I don't know the exact numbers, there's a number of cases where they find a a bullet, uh, the person died by a gunshot, and there's a uh, a bullet entry and exit wound, and there's a corresponding uh, birthmark to the entry and the exit wound. And the entry and exit wounds are different from one another in ways which match what the wounds would be like on the deceased individual. And the chances of having two matching birthmarks like that, uh, maybe Siddharth has the numbers ready, I haven't pulled them up, are it's astronomically unlikely. And and then you combine that with, you know, for example, that the children might display something which psychologists call uh, traumatic play, where they act out something that, you know, relates to their previous life or they... They might have emotions and thoughts about people from that previous life, which are the ones you'd expect that person to have. Uh, and that that's another thing that matches up. And then, of course, the memories, you know, uh, knowing details about a person's life, which only that person could have known or which the child would have had no way of acquiring. In many of these cases, the researchers had to do extensive digging of stuff that was not available on the Internet in order to corroborate this information, which is not something these child or even the, fam- the parents of the child could have done. And then lastly, Siddharth is going to be giving some evidence from, uh, I'll let him explain that one because I haven't thought it, mediumship, some evidence from mediumship. So he can explain the evidence there, but the way that relates is it shows the ability of of consciousness to exist separate from the body and for an individual to continue existing, you know, with an intact personality after departing their physical body. And this is a kind of evidence that, you know, it makes the plausibility of reincarnation it adds to the case. So now I'll hand it over to Siddharth to go into the evidence. Thank you. Thank you, Arjun, for the brief intro, which you shared. Um, <clears throat> so um, there are two kinds of evidence which we will discuss today. The first is the, is the evidence relating to um, children who could recall their previous life. But before we go deep into the evidence um, and give you some numbers, I want to just, I want you to imagine a case. Imagine you are a parent and you you have a, say, a two or three year old child and he or she comes up to you and tells you, dear daddy, you know, I'm, you know, I remember uh, my past life and this is what I used to be. This is used to be my name of my wife. That's used to be my name of my father. This is where I used to live. This is whom I used to play with. That's what I used to sell. That's where I used to work. When you hear so many different data points, you used to you you think you know maybe you know first time he said the kids say something you may hear, think hey maybe this is just you know the kids like to imagine stuff joking you know but when the kids start giving such so much information day after day after day 
And it's just not information, but also behavior. If the kid starts acting, hey, as, as an adult, if the kid starts um, asking for things which only adult ask, then you should have start wondering, maybe, you know, there is something more to it than, than, than just the imagination of, it, of the child. And this is exactly which happened in the cases of reports submitted by Dr. Ian Stevenson. Dr. Ian, Steen, Ian Stevenson was the chair of Department of um, Psychology at University of Virginia. And uh, in in 70s and 60s, 70s and 80s, he went to you know, various countries looking for such cases being reported by locals in media or in other places and tracking them down and checking them rigorously whether, uh, you know, are there any cases where kids have reported their previous lives? Because he had heard about that this has been the case. And he found a lot of them and he, did, and he recorded them in, you know, nauseating detail. So in about 30 to 40 years of research, Dr. Ian Stevenson, along with his uh, friends and associates, Dr. Jim Tucker, Dr. Brian Grayson, uh, at University of Virginia, and, and other scholars in other parts of the world, they all together collected 2,500 cases of children who could record, who could recall their previous life. And these cases were, were, were the ones in which the previous personality had been found. So go back to the imagined case that your kid is telling you these is details and you go to that place and you see, hey, these details match. <clears throat> when you hear that such details have matched um, for a kid who is two or three years old, whom we have not given any computer or internet to search for, this is 70s and 80s. Remember, there's no iPhones or iPads at that time. So you seem to wonder, you know, what is the explanation for it? You know, how come a three-year-old kid is able to behave, is able to share, such unique information to which the kid has no uh, the access to apart from the reason that it has to be you know, a case of reincarnation. So, um, you know, many people can make the claim, maybe the parents, they want to make money off their kid and they schooled their kid as a two or three year old to say these things. So to counter that, I'm going to discuss a very special category of those 2,500 cases. What is the special category? These are the cases of children whose statements were recorded by a third party before they went to see and, and or find the previous personality. This means there was no chance for uh, you know, the parent to go and get the information and mix up the matter. And the cases which I'm discussing the previous personality lived miles away and there had no there had been no contact between those families before the third party recorded everything down so let me explain one more time the kid says a few things about his past life a third person comes and records it down on a piece of paper prints it or shares it and keeps it safe then they go and look out for that person in that locality they find it and, and the qualities and the, and, and the details match. There are, out of the 2,500 cases, there are 33 such cases. These have been recorded by Professor Jim Tucker in a 2005 paper. You can look up online. The cases of reincarnation type with, recorded, with written records. So one such case, which I want to discuss right now, or two such cases I want to discuss right now, the first case is Sujit. So Sujit was born in a, in a coastal town of Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is a country south of India, a small, small country uh, compared to India. You know. And there, uh, there was this boy named Sujit who, at the age of two years old, he started to, to talk about his previous life. He started telling his family members, hey, don't call me Sujit, call me Sami. That's my name. And he started uh, fearing trucks. Whenever he would hear the name truck or hear about the noise of the truck, he would run away and hide. <clears throat> and he started telling his you know, friends at two, something between two and three years old, he started telling his friends and his family members that he used to have a wife named Maggie. 
he used to often quarrel with Maggie, and he lived in a town called Gorokana, which was something like hundred kilometers from where they were living. He used to work on trains, and he used to make and sell, uh, you know, um, local liquor. Like he used to distill liquor himself in his previous lifetime, and he used to sell that for which he was famous. And he also shared that he died being hit by a truck. So a local monk who was a, a Buddhist monk who was staying in nearby, he came to know about this kid saying these things. So usually, you know, local monks in these areas like our teachers and also in some sense, um, you know, uh, head of the family, he recorded all these details. And then he, he himself went on a journey to verify these details. Nor also this boy at two year or three year old, he used to sometimes ask his parents for the liquor known as Arak, which he used to produce. You can't imagine a three year old kid asking for liquor, you know, it's just too strange. There were no TVs there, you know, and he used to ask. So this case was verified in an amazing manner uh, by this monk who went on to, to, to do this research, uh, to, do, to look after this person. And he indeed find a person named Sami who had died being hit by a truck. And then later, Dr. Ian Stevenson, he went and he interviewed all the people involved in this case and recorded all the detail and presented uh, the detailed report in 1975 paper, a, a book called Cases of Reincarnation Type, Volume 3, Cases from Sri Lanka. Next case is the case of Kumkum. She's a girl who at the age of three year, year old could tell things from his, her past life. And in her case, it was one of Kumkum's aunt who recorded all the details on a paper and kept it safe before, uh, you know, and uh, kept it safely before them going and finding out the person on the other side. Now, Kumkum was born in a higher caste. You know, in India, they have different castes, lower caste, higher caste. So she was born in a higher caste and she was narrating the details of a person whom by the details you could tell belonged to a lower caste. And her father didn't even want to discover or put any effort in finding that person because it meant disrepute for the family. So her father the whole time tried to hush away the incident. In fact, she used, she used to chastise her for sharing the details. Only because her aunt was very friendly, she could you know, take those details from her. So <clears throat> you know, she shared where she lived. She also shared the name of her son. She shared how she died. She shared which place she used to live. She shared that um, in her house, there was an iron safe for which she had a snake whom she used to feed milk. She also shared that uh, the snake had a part of its tail missing. She also shared that she used to fast on these specific days. <clears throat> and later, you know, when the previous person was found, those details again matched in an amazing manner. So these are two such cases where there's a written record. Another type of reincarnation cases is, as my friend Arjun shared, where birthmarks are matched. Like an amazing case is a case of um, uh, pers a boy named uh, Chennai who is from Thailand. This boy shared that, that um, where he used to live and he also shared that how he died because somebody shot him gunpoint on his head and he showed that he has his birthmark because of that shot. He showed exactly they have a birthmark here and a here. And when those details were later checked, um, you know, and, and the previous person was found, whose name used to be, um, uh, whose name used to be, I can't remember right now where the name used to be. Uh, this case was recorded by Professor Haraldson from, who's from Iceland. So not from Dr. Stevenson, but another person. So uh, the name person used to, used to be Buakai. So he could remember that how Buakai had died. So these is another case where, you know, you have, a strong, you can say, a written record because it's a record of birthmark. So these are two such cases. Another type of evidence which I would like to share today in favor of reincarnation is the case of mediumship. I'm not sure how many of you know mediums. Mediums are like you know people with some extraordinary capabilities that you can go and share with them the names of people who have passed them in your life, and they can share with you some details regarding that person. Now there has been always been claimed that there's sometimes known as a cold reading or you know people try to cheat you know being a medium they will they will say things which are common like you know your brother used to be very loving to you i'm sure you i'm sure your brother used to love you a lot but these details are you know it can be easily be cheated with so there's always this case uh, that you know the mediumships have been uh, you know a, a topic of concern 
But mediumship, if proven, can give an evidence that consciousness can live beyond the, the death of the human body. So a bunch of researchers at Wellington Research Center, uh, sorry, Winbridge Research Center um, in, in, in US, they uh, developed a set of experiment. What's the experiment? They had these three people, the person who was giving reading, the medium, the person who is being read, the sitter, and an experimenter who is evaluating. They had all these three people blind to each other. That means it's called quintuple blind or you know, more than double blind system. So the, the reader, the, 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 sorry, the, the medium had no idea whom he was giving reading for except the name which was given to him. The, the person who asked for the reading, he got back two sets of reading, one which came from the medium and second were decoy readings from another person. And the reader was asked to rate that if either of those readings match the person whom he had asked about. And then the experimenter was asked to judge, evaluate this evidence without knowing whether the, he was rating, he was judging it for a decoy reading or the correct reading. Such a system ensured there was no case of fraud. And they found six, in 67% in of the cases, the medium was able to give share unique information about the previous personality or discarnate person. So such research has been replicated in by a group of researchers in Paris too. So this research, uh, this uh, the, uh, uh, you know, in, in topics of reincarnation and consciousness beyond death has been repeated by multiple labs throughout the world. It is just not one researcher or two scholars, but a, a big branch of psychology studies this known as branch of parapsychology. So let's summarize again. Um, Dr. Ian Stevenson has done this research since 1970s, has recorded more than 2,500 cases along with his team. This research has been replicated a number of times. We're talking of cases in which there is a written record of children um, telling things about their past life and um, those being recorded and then checked by a third neutral party. And then I also presented some evidence from Dr. Julie Bishel's WRC team, which have made this more than double blind system to verify medium research. So this is it from my side. You got it. Thank you very much, Siddharth and Arjuna. And with that, want to let you know, folks, if it's your first time here at Modern Day Debate, we are a neutral platform hosting debates on science, religion, and politics. And we want you to feel welcome no matter what walk of life you are from. We are glad you are here. And also want to let you know about this big, juicy debate coming up on the bottom right of your screen. Apostate Prophet returns to debate Stuart on atheism versus Christianity. You don't want to miss it, so hit that subscribe button as that's going to be a big one next weekend. And with that, we'll kick it over to T-Jump. And G-Man, thanks for being here. The floor is all yours. Yeah, thanks, thanks Siddharth and Arjuna for coming. Thanks for Jane for hosting and G-Man for being my partner. Strange turn of events, that is. Uh, yeah, so as far as I know, there's no evidence of reincarnation or past lives or mediumship ever working in any case ever. Um, there's lots of cases of very flawed studies that don't in any way indicate what they're supposed to indicate. And they've been shown to be flawed because they've been replicated by skeptics like James Randi and his compatriots who showed that the similar psychic phenomenon can be replicated by cold reading, hot reading, psychological manipula manipulation, um, dissociative identity disorder. There's all kinds of things that show it's just, it's just, it's all human psychology and there's no evidence of it really doing anything. If kids really could reincarnate and remember past lives and they would have skills like, drive cars remember where the they parked uh the locations of the cities that kind of stuff they would do far better than kids of the same age who didn't reincarnate with information so if reincarnation was a thing then you'd expect the reincarnated kids to have new skills that they could then use to make more money to be more successful etc cetera, etc cetera. it doesn't happen um all the cases of even the third party cases don't work because the third party recordings aren't the origin or origination of the events like obviously this kid who the monk recorded having a past life experience had been doing this stuff with his parents before. So most likely it's his parents who told him this stuff and already knew the stories and just denied it and lied about it. And the monk went and checked it later. Like, Oh yeah, look, they're right. So it was more likely a lie. And that's a far better explanation than actual reincarnation. What would 
be evidence of an actual reincarnation would be, like I said, if you could have the kids gain new skills and those new skills could then be used to accomplish something in the world at a far higher rate than kids who don't claim to reincarnate. The fundamental explanation of all reincarnation is the fact that it happens to most kids. Most kids have false memories. And so they claim, oh, I had this false memory of a princess or a dragon or a king or whatever. And the vast, vast majority of them are just completely fabricated. And they're obviously fabricated. But some of them kind of resemble people in the real world. And some of them are kind of accurate representations in some vague way. And so it's just a gambler's fallacy. If you have a bunch of random accounts that go across a wide enough spectrum, some of them will be accurate. Same with birthmarks. Uh, so none of that is particularly magical at all. It's just if you have a, a large enough sample size, some will be accurate. That's that's all it is. Most of them are definitely fraud where the parents taught them things or where they heard things from neighbors or uh, other townsfolk and then internalized it as false memories themselves. All of it's explained psychologically. Um, as far as I know, there isn't any actual evidence of reincarnation whatsoever. I'll hand it over to G-Man. All right. Uh, and again, uh, I'd like to thank James for having me on today. Can, can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I, I agree with T-Jump. There is no scientific evidence for, um, for, a, uh, for a reincarnation. In fact, the only way an argument can be made is through faith. And if they make an argument through faith, uh, their argument through faith has to make logical and rational sense. Uh, T-Jump brought up an excellent point when he said that if these souls were really, you know, went from one body to another, let's say a human to another human, then not only would they have to have new skills, they would have to have the skills of the person that went into their bodies. For example, uh, I don't see, uh, for example, uh, Julius Caesar dying and having to go through our educational system again and learning how to count to three or whatever, you know what I mean? Learning how to do math learning how to do, you know, uh, things like that. He would already have these skills. He would be an even better warrior than what he was when, when, when he, when he was a senior, when he was a Caesar. So if you're going to take it on faith, because there is no scientific evidence for it, your, your claim has to make logical sense. Um, it is kind of silly when you actually think about the whole reincarnation um, idea to begin with, because again, a soul has to has to leave a body to enter another body. Uh, the idea of a uh, of a human dying and then having to become a dog for some reason, or a human being dying and having to become grass. Uh, I heard uh, the gentleman talk about this before we started the show. Uh, the idea of a human being losing their soul and going into a body of a you know a fish or something like that, I think is kind of ridiculous. Uh, in order for that to make sense, you have to have something demonstrable and something empirical to be able to prove that. And until they do it, there's no good reason to believe it. Now, uh, I do have one explanation from the from the Christian uh, worldview regarding uh, people in their reoccurring dreams. Um, as you know, uh, Christians believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in God, but we also believe in demons, too. And we believe that demons who have always existed, well, now has always existed. They are created beings that live outside of time and space or whatever. Um, and they are able to communicate to people and tell people about things that happened in the past. And these things can happen while you're asleep. Okay. Uh, I use first Timothy four one, where it says that that demons have the ability to teach people things, to tell people things, to whisper into their ears. Jesus rebuked uh, Peter when Peter said that, you know, that, that he would die for him. They would protect him. He says, get thee behind me, Satan. You know what I mean? So uh, demons have the ability to talk to people. The Bible talks about how the uh, how a demon energized, um, uh, energized and control Judas Iscariot. You know what I mean? Now, that's not the same thing as, you know, as it is in reincarnation, but it's proof that a demon can talk to you and a demon can control you and a demon can get you to think certain things that are not your own thoughts. All right. So totally agree with T-Jump on this. Uh, the main point that I think we, we need to take out of this is if they're going to argue that reincarnation is true. It's got to make rational and logical sense. You got to do better than you went to bed and you woke up, you know what I mean? And you, and, and you dreamed about this person. Therefore reincarnation is true. Got to do better than that today. I'll, and I'll close there. We will jump into open conversation and want to let you know, folks, our guests are linked to the description. So if you want to hear more from them, you certainly can with that gentleman. Thanks so much. The floor is all yours for open dialogue. Uh, all right, I've got some pushback on some of those points. So I, I didn't see much substantial arguments from either of our uh, opposing interlocutors today. So it has to make sense. I haven't seen any logical contradiction pointed out in our work. Uh, it's it's ridiculous. Okay, well, that's just an opinion. Um, 
souls becoming dogs is ridiculous. Yeah, um, demons planted the memories there. I really don't think you want to go down that road because if demons can plant memories that make us think we lived, lived before and all this sort of stuff, then that opens us wide to last Thursdayism. How do I know demons didn't plant my memories of everything prior to last Thursday? Uh, T-Jump mentioned that there's uh, cold readings which can match the, the type of evidence we've got. There was no studies given. Uh, the evidence we presented has not been addressed in any details. There's just been uh, assertions made that there's counter evidence. I want to know what this evidence is. Um, and most of them are definitely fraud. So let's see one of the cases we presented demonstrated to be fraud. Okay, yeah, me or T-Jump? Yeah, I can start. So first thing, uh, I don't need to show a logical contradiction in your position to show it's flawed. Like there's no logical contradiction with uh, magical pixie leprechauns. That doesn't mean it's not a flawed idea. Uh, secondly, I don't need to individually address each of your examples because, I mean, I didn't have them beforehand. So I don't have time to like just Google them and try to find individual examples. But you can because this is rejected by the scientific community. So the better explanation is the things I listed, which are psychological misinformation um, and the opportunity for the parents to like explain this to their kids and lie about it. The fact that it was recorded by a, a monk doesn't mean that the parents didn't do it before the monk came. Like it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Like, Oh, the monk came and then this kid started to experience past life uh, memories. And then the monk wrote it down and the parents had literally no involvement yet. Not, no, it's implausible. It's far more plausible. So yeah, the parents just manipulated the kid into doing this or that the kid heard it from other people. So yeah, that's a far better explanation than reincarnation. Also, the fact that you still have to teach the kid normal stuff in school is a good indication it was false. If the kid actually did experience reincarnation, as G-Man said, and I can't believe I'm agreeing with G-Man, um, yeah, they, they would already know math. They would already know basic languages. Like if the kid was reincarnated from like a different country and could speak the language, that'd be great. Great example. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention that one. Um, but uh, as we know, that's most likely false because their parents mostly teach them the new languages with their kids. So there's no actual evidence of reincarnation being true. Um, none of the things you presented are the best explanation. The best explanation is the one that we have lots and lots of examples of, um, which is psychological manipulation. Not to mention, I can't believe I'm saying this. Yeah, I need to get your DVRs for this one. The burden of proof is on the one making the claim. And I have no problem meeting any of the burdens, you know, meeting my burden at all. But if you make a claim and you're saying that somebody had a dream and this is proof of reincarnation, that proof, that is on you, not on me. I have the proof. So. Uh, regarding the skills point, uh, so the, the mem people who remember past lives are, 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 you know, they're outliers. It's not normal. And almost all of them are cases of people who died in a really traumatic way. So it's as if they're being given the opportunity to resolve, you know, some unresolved stuff from that past life or the trauma just is so powerful that it just carries over into the next life. As far as skills carrying over, well, often we do find people who are born as child prodigies and people are born with varying degrees of skills in this life. Reincarnation is a suitable explanation for that. Uh, there, there are cases where people like, you know, there's one, one, one case where the person went into the military and they were supposedly in the military in their past life. We do see some carryover, but you start in a new body, you have a new brain, that brain needs training. You, you, you still have to learn motor skills that the brain gives us access to our cognitive abilities within this life. Uh, it's, it's consciousness, you know, it, it comes from the soul, but the brain is what gives us access to our cognitive faculties in this life and body. Well, okay. Yeah, I think, I, 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 I think, I, I think I, one I, second, I will let you add something. I think Tijam got the question wrong. We're not trying to debate here what skills one can learn or what, what skills would be carrying over when somebody's reincarnated. We have to just show enough evidence to make a case that that, 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 that there is enough evidence for reincarnation. Now, what does reincarnation mean? Is, and, and, and what skills should be carried forward? You know, tomorrow you can say a person who's reincarnated, he should know everything in his past life. We didn't claim. The, de the debate is, is not titled. Does reincarnation mean everybody knows in their, what they know in their past life? No, we didn't claim that. We said, is there evidence that somebody has reincarnated? Yes, there is evidence. No, Why? you have because evidence. No, because, no, 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 no. You have again. evidence that Basically, you had a dream. Let, let, let me finish. That's what you exactly. We do have to give him let a chance finish. to finish, man. Let me finish. I'm not saying that somebody had a dream. I'm not talking about a dream. We're talking about kids who are sharing information with their parents. And then some of that, uh, you know, in some cases which are shared, now there's a third party which is coming and recording it. And... Uh, you know, we're not just asking one or two details which you can throw around. Hey, he was just saying this thing. Now, uh, in, in the case which I shared, Sujit, he shared the name of his father, his wife, the name of his kids, the place where he lived, the business he used to do. In fact, he used to show behavior of how to make distilled alcohol at home. 
as a, as a small kid, which people were surprised that he's a small kid. How does he know that stuff? And you know, why is he interested in that stuff? And he used to act as a, an adult. You can find all find all those details in gory details in in the work done by you know Ian Stevenson there. So just on the on the on the face saying that you know this is all fraud. This is actually not doing the hard work and you know trying to argue against it. You know, hey, what I'm, whatever I'm saying is fraud. And then you know I, I don't need to prove anything at all. Well, you well, take the case, take case by case. How much detail is there, and what's the motive behind parents frauding it? These are poor pa- people in in Sri Lanka. They didn't get a penny from the investigators, not from the monk. What is the motive behind twenty five hundred cases who are trying well, to talk about the previous life? So, first thing is, is it possible that the parents could teach a kid all of that without having a reincarnation? Not a three, not a three year old kid. Sorry. Uh, the answer is yes. Yes, it is possible to do that. We have three-year-old kids in China playing violin, which is significantly more complicated than making alcohol. So yes, we can absolutely have kids who are taught this information by their parents without any problem whatsoever, which is a more plausible explanation. The motive doesn't matter. Like The motive could be fame. The motive could be they believe it. Um, and so psychological self-fulfilling prophecy, the motive could be religious beliefs. There could be lots of motives. The motives are irrelevant to the fact that... No, is it more, what, There's sorry. also... There's also the issue of when the soul is leaving one body to go into another and they're retaining all these thoughts in their memories, you know, when when the soul is going into another body, it retains everything that it's learned throughout its life, regardless of how much trauma it's been through or how many different things it's been through. It retains everything. If anything, Why this would child that be the case? like a super soldier. Well, because you're saying that that this person's soul left their body and they went into another person's body. If that is true, they retain all of their memories and all of their thoughts. If they don't, no. then well, wait, 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 a wait a minute. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Because if they don't, then why are they having dreams about their past life? Okay. You, why you are they remembering they knew ontology. how to do things from their past life? That doesn't make any rational or logical sense whatsoever. If There's a multiple- soul if a soul is retaining their mind and they're going to live inside of another body, then they're going to retain the information that, that that they had in the previous life. And we don't see that. We don't see that now. We don't even see that in science fiction. Anyway, I'll let you guys go. Okay. I'm sorry. There's multiple different metaphysical views. So you can choose one metaphysical view and say, if this metaphysical view were true, then we would expect to say the things you just described. So that just means that <laughs> metaphysical view isn't true. And we have other views where all that carries over are subtle impressions and in extraordinary circumstances, some memories carry over. You have presuppositions. That's what you have. You don't have any actual, any 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 any, <clears throat> any any actual empirical data to be able to suggest that this is reincarnation. How do you know just, that is reincarnation and not somebody just dreaming or ideas being planted into their minds while they're dreaming? While they're dreaming. Okay. Well, by, 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 by the demons. <laughs> listen to me. Listen to me. You can laugh at me about the demons all you want. I can talk about I can talk about karma and how people go into this, and I'll have my laugh later. Laugh all you want, but my point, the point, the point I'm getting at is this: You're telling everybody that your evidence for reincarnation is somebody having a dream. No dream is in. in that, that's awake. your argument. Your whole your whole existence, your whole argument is reincarnation exists because I had a dream. Well, so, no, no, so by, your straw, by, man. One second. so by dream, he just means a psychological <laughs> phenomenon. So a memory, something like that. So any, any psychological phenomenon that is interpreted to be a memory. Um, but, and I, I kind of agree with his broad point here is that simply psychological phenomenon of I remember X isn't actually evidence that it's true. So you would need something more than that, like a skill, mm-hmm. like if someone could, build an engine like if a three-year-old could build an engine with literally no prior training we could have like a their entire life recorded to know they had no prior training that would be good evidence um okay so saying, okay so would, would that be good evidence if somebody could as a three-year-old do some amazing skill would that be evidence for reincarnation if we could show that like their parents didn't teach them it and we could have, like their entire life recorded before that to know their parents didn't teach them that how or, does the human well, soul get okay, transferred so, so, into a, so into a grain of grass T jump is saying the evidence would be that we have to record a child from uh, while he's born till three year old and record uh, in everything on YouTube or maybe on camera. And if the, if the kid is able to perform, show some prodigious behavior, which he was not taught by their parents, then that would be enough evidence for it. Is that correct? How, do you, how, yep. how does the human soul get, get recycled into grass? How does the human soul go to live inside of a dog or a cat? How does that work? Well, I wanted to. Where's the well, evidence? Well, but, but, but where's the evidence for that? Where's the evidence that the human soul 
goes into a dog yeah. or a cat. Let, let, yes. let me let me answer let me answer the question yeah. first. So yes, I think that would be evidence. I think you would you would need to be able to falsify the hypothesis. The parents taught them this, and if you can't falsify that hypothesis, it's always a better explanation. And so if there is ever a time in the kid's life where their parents and you, they weren't being recorded, their parents could have taught them this then yeah, that kind of falsifies your hypothesis because that's always going to be more plausible than reincarnation until we actually have yeah. some empirical evidence of reincarnation. Yes, yes, yes. Now, now, now the, the, there are cases of, of child prodigies who have shown exemplary behavior, but since they were not aware of TGEM before you know, this debate, none of them tried and they're not, they not trying to prove their child to be a case of reincarnation. None of them recorded their videos of their kid while growing up from zero to three year old. So we don't, we don't have such evidence. But we do have a case which I shared today of Kumkum Verma. Now, as I shared, in the case of Kumkum Verma, her parents didn't even want her daughter to visit themselves, included the previous person. It was only her aunt who visited the previous person. Why? Because they were from a higher caste, and the person she was talking the whole time was from a lower caste. So there was a negative incentive for the parent to teach their kid about something who's from a you know a lower caste family. It's like you know. You, you, you wouldn't want uh, you know your kid to um, I mean you can't really have an example here in, in this you know in the Western world because there's no caste system but in India the caste system is pretty pretty heavy which means that the the lower caste are considered untouchable so not given respect and she was born in a higher caste family but she was revealing stuff which for which her pa- father used to punish her so there is negative incentive in part of her parents to so-called fraud her her daughter into this knowledge. What's the what's, evidence? What, no, what, what's what's a motive for what's a motive for her father to teach that? Well, there could be lots of motives. So again, psychologically, give me one. Give me one. Uh, give me one. Religious reasons to want to have reincarnation for some value, emotion, wow. want to have significance. Want, wait, wait, wait. wait. So, so some... let me let me let me let me address here. So again, there are people who believe the world is flat just because they want to feel special. So the, the family just might want to feel special, and that would be a motivational self. So there's literally infinitely many psychological motivations that could exist. None of this is special. The fact that you have one possible counter motivation doesn't in any way eliminate the possibility of many more positive motivations. So unless you can actually read the entire psychology of the individual to know for a fact that there is more negative emotional connotation than positive, which you can't, then you can't use that as an argument that there is actually some kind of psychological deterrent for this because there might not be. That might just be an apparent thing that's brought up in order to try and present evidence when it's not. It's just the psychological features aren't evidence. And why is there a need for a person to relearn math and English and how to read and everything? You know, if they're reincarnated, I'm not talking about somebody from the ancient Greek world or anything like that. You got an American that dies and goes into an American body, whether he be man or woman or whatever. Right. Why is it that um, that they have to relearn math? They have to relearn how to, how to read and write. They have to relearn science. They have to relearn all of these different things. Why, why, why can't, they, why can't they retain injury? that information? Why when somebody gets a brain injury, do they often need to relearn things? Well, we're talking about somebody who's dead and we're talking about their mind being transferred, being transferred into another person's body. If their yeah, mind is covered. being, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. A mind is not physical. All right. If the person's mind is going into another body, you need to hear this. Okay. Then that means they retained everything that they learned in that first life. If they returned, if, if they retained everything in that first life and they're living in another body, they should be able to remember all those things. Why don't they remember those things? If your argument's true, then brain injury shouldn't require somebody to relearn things when they recover. The brain and the mind is not the same thing. A brain is a physical co- it's a physical thing living inside of your body. A mind, okay, a mind sure. is not. You go from one body to a new body, you get a new brain. Memories, you get a brain memories injury, also, memories and you grow are your brain also back. not physical. Hold on a minute. Memories are also not physical. Okay? If you die... Okay, so then why in, can in a brain injury soul. cause people to lose memory? We're not talking about a physical body going into a physical body. <laughs> we're talking about someone's soul. Let's 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 do some definitions here just so that we're not being intellectually dishonest here, okay? The soul is the and, and you can tell me if you agree with this, that it is the immaterial aspect or the essence of a human being. Do you believe that that's what a soul is? You're not talking to T jump now. I'm a, I'm a Christian. I actually do believe a soul exists. So answer the question. Okay, is a soul the immaterial aspect or essence of a human being? Yes or no? Sure, that's one way you could say it. What is the definition of a mind? A mind is the the thing that does the experiencing and thinking, observing. Right. The mind also is what retains all of these memories and everything. I think me and you both can agree with that. So if, if you got a person's soul, 
and it has a mind and they're conscious and they're going into another body, you know what I mean? Then they should be able to retain all that information. And this is important now. If they don't have a mind, okay, if a person loses the ability to remember all these things, then where is your claim about them going to sleep and having dreams about their past life? It's a contradiction in terms. T. Jump was correct in his opening statement. I don't think you understand the way my argument, my counter to your argument based on brain injuries derails your whole point. If your point was true, then a brain injury, you can, I mean, you respond to it by saying, we're not talking about a physical brain. It's like, well, okay, we're talking about the mind, but a person who suffers a brain injury loses the ability to recall memories. They can lose the ability to perform certain actions. They can need to learn motor skills from scratch. Um, and if this is just what happens with the same body with a slight brain injury, then why would we not have to learn things over again in a new body? I, see, here's the thing. I don't That's have a, a problem point. with your brain. I don't have a problem with your brain injury argument. But if if if, if you're going to make the brain injury argument, then you got to stop talking about how they had these dreams and they remember everything. Again, we're talking about well, material you gotta, you gotta soul. You got to those two ideas. Hold on a minute. All right, one hold sec, on a minute. One sec, no, I don't. One sec. No, hold no, I don't. on a second. Okay, G man, G man, I, if you're able to me. hold on a second, I'm talking. Is that G man? If you're able to pull the mouthpiece just a little bit further away from your mouth, just because it, it I is apologize. I'm doing that now. louder. Doing that now. Bring I'm it down along your chin line too. It gets less. Yeah. So. So we, we, we said that the soul G-Man. is immaterial. Okay, it's, it's definitely, if you can pull it all away even further. Okay, doing it now. Is that better? That's better if you talk at okay, that so level. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit lower now, okay? Thank you. So if the soul is the immaterial aspect of the essence of a human being, it's not material. It is immaterial. You can't use the brain no more because the brain is a physical thing. Okay, we're talking about the mind. The mind is the element of a person that enables them to be aware of the world and the experiences to think and to feel uh, the faculty of consciousness and thought. That is what a mind is, according to the dictionary. Okay, if that is being transferred into someone else's own body, they should be able to retain all of the life experiences like you guys claim that they have which is why people are able to dream and remember all of these things. You take that away, that person doesn't have the ability to do those things, and you refuted your own argument. Okay, the answer man, me, just, is something that is used in a lot of on. false yeah, religions. My, my ears are bleeding. Um, so, g Man, you said that several times. Their response was perfectly legitimate. The fact that you can be reincarnated doesn't necessarily entail that you're reincarnated with all possible memories. The fact that you assume that's the case doesn't make it true. So your assumption about souls returning all memories isn't actually evidence. It is possible to have reincarnation with partial memories. But his uh, Arjuna's refutation actually refutes his own position in a way, because if your brain can damage your memories, then it should also damage your past memories too. So there's no reason to think that your memories of language or math are in any way different than your language of past traumas or whatever and so unless well, again you guys, i was arguing wait, 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 wait. so again. unless arjuna uh, can present some feature of the brain that can actually do this beyond just physical but stuff, that's not my argumentation though but that's not my argumentation though hold on a minute hold on a minute hold on a minute this is my argument and i know what i'm doing we give you a chance i do want to give tom a chance to respond to arjuna as well though so unless Arjuna can show that there's some mechanism by which these souls can actually retain uh, memories other than physical stuff, then there isn't any reason to believe that is the case. And since we do have nothing but physical stuff evidenced, then it seems more plausible to think that his argument that uh, physical damage can damage the brain would also apply to memories of the past, which would then invalidate his argument just as it does g-man's but, th- but that's not my argument though see i'm arguing from the christian worldview i'm not arguing from the worldview of materialism okay i'm arguing from a, to- from a totally different argument from, from, from a totally different perspective all right the bottom line is at the end of the day me me and the, the reincarnation is uh uh Sidharth and R. john I, I, I can't pronounce your name Arjuna. Arjuna. we both agree we both agree that souls exist i have no issue with that Okay, we both have an understanding that with that when our souls leave our bodies, our consciousness goes with that. We both agree with that, but we but but we also agree that 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 our souls retain our memories and our thoughts. Okay, they if 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 that is not the case, okay, and they're saying that okay, you got a soul that's filled with trauma and is injured, which is not possible because there's no way for those two to even measure how a soul could be injured mentally or anything like that to go into another person's body. You know what I mean? Their, their argument still doesn't make any sense. You know what I, I mean? Get- so, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask my question again. 
Okay. If you're saying that a soul that, that, that a soul leaves a human body, and, and we're going to keep using a human because if we use another animal, it just ain't going to make no sense at all. You know what I mean? If it leaves a human body and then it goes to live in another human body, and you're telling me it keeps bits and pieces, you know what I mean? Where they remember going to the bathroom one time in their life, or they remember going to the store in their life. No, or no, they, remember they don't being remember a random bits and life. pieces. They remember emotionally deep cutting events. It's it's the depth of the, the as though a Sanskrit word is samskara. So impressions, subtle impressions are carried over. The deeper the impression, the more likely it is to be carried over. So. It's only these really deep impressions from trauma, which we tend to see being carried over. It's only the, the, those cases where, where we have cases for reincarnation. Yeah, like I said, you're, you're trying to pigeonhole the metaphysics here. So you've got your metaphysics. Your metaphysics don't work for reincarnation. Fine. We're offering a different metaphysics. Your metaphysics also doesn't work for brain injuries because you think that there's one mind going from before the brain injury to after the brain injury, except you know, the mind, the that mind goes... That's you not you my think that yours. it would be the same mind going from one body to the next? It would also be the same mind going from the uninjured brain to the injured brain. So why do we see a lot? Your of claim is not that the brain is injured. I can actually go and read to you what you believe about karma it's and what you believe brain. about reincarnation. It's, it's not a brand new brain because <laughs> if it's a brand new brain, then you don't have the memories of your past life. It is a contradiction in terms. Uh, and then I don't want to spend too much time on this. On, on T Jump's point, the reason why it's not a problem is because my on my understanding, the brain is what gives us access to cognitive abilities. Uh, so we do get cases of people remembering things which they previously didn't remember and near-death experiences. So you, you can hear so many stories of people ha having near-death experiences where they remembered details from their childhood. They remember being born. They remember the first time their father was excited with them. Uh, they remember emotionally important events. Um, and these were things that they had no memory of ordinarily, and they only remember them when they're having a, a, a life review and a near-death experience. Um, so we have that as evidence that pe things that people couldn't remember can be remembered in a non-physical state. Uh, of course, uh, I don't know if Siddharth has any specific examples where some of those memories are corroborated, but the point is just to show a principle and how it could be possible in a possible metaphysics. What we're arguing for today is evidence for reincarnation, not an entire ontology. We're proving every detail of it. So we have cases, G-Man keeps calling it dreams. We're not talking about dreams. We're talking about like in the case of Kum Kum Verma, she, she remembered, you know, it's not like somebody saying, I remember... Uh, you know, I, I was killed in New York in the streets. It's like, okay, well, there's 50 people called, killed in New York in the streets every month, right? I'm just making this number up. So obviously, if we find a person who somewhat matches a, a vague statement like that, then it's like, well, they're just imagining things and they've given a vague enough story in order for us to corroborate it. But Kum Kum Verma d described that she remembered uh, that, that in her previous life, uh, she worked with a hemp. Uh, she was describing the fact that her son's name in the life, the fact that he worked with a hammer, her grandson's name, the town her father had lived in, personal details such as having an iron safe at home, a sword hanging near the cot where she slept, and a pet snake that she said milk, milk to. Those are really precise details. And we also have uh, them showing special abilities in the form of when they're taken to the place where they, they allegedly lived in the past life. They can, once they're in that town, they can walk all the way through the town, down the back alleys and find their old home. They can walk into the house and walk all the way around the house and say, that was the bedroom. Oh, you've, they've renovated. They put a wall here. They can, they can call out all these details, which, uh, you know, the parents didn't know any of these details. How could the parents have trained the child to know how to navigate that city? Well, how did, how did you know the parents don't know any of those details? Well, they'd never been to that town before. How do you know that? Because of the record kept by the, the neutral persons who was walking along them and finding the persons. Now you can say, how do we know? We know how, how do we know that's correct? Again, we are questioning. You know, this, all these twenty five hundred cases are all fraud. Everybody except you, who's sitting on a YouTube chair on a chair uh, across this YouTube channel, is the only person who can say truth. Well, no, everybody the, in the, you said, the world. You said there were twenty five. You said there were like twenty five of these third party cases, right? What the thirty three hundred thirty three cases, which are third party cases but the 2500 yep. so, cases recorded by by the by the you know by Stevenson's team right right so there's 33 cases where some third party met a family at some point not ha he yeah. hasn't been within their entire life like they met the family and yeah. there's this kid who has this story yeah so when the third party meets the family the kid already has the story yeah so the so, how the, so how does the third party not know that the family 
already was at the city, already brought their kid there, already taught them all this stuff to say about the house. Because, but they haven't yet, nobody, when they go and find that person, previous person, their family, they have not yet heard about the kid. They have not heard about that family and they've not heard about the case. They're hearing for the first time from the third party. What, uh, so we have to take we have to take somebody's you know you know you know what they're saying and and uh, that's how it goes in court you know you have a bunch right. of witnesses which make a claim claim that you know I saw this person Wait, can, this you, person. can you say that one more time I, did, I wasn't following your order so the third party meets the family yep and then and... third party go, goes on an investigation and finds and discovers the previous personality which the kid was talking about discovers it and then brings the kid. And the family to meet the previous person whom he, they were they were talking about. Yep. For and, the first time. and then Arjuna had mentioned that they could walk through the cities and find their home yep. and all that stuff. So yep. my question was, uh -huh. was how do we know that the parents hadn't already taught this to the kid before the investigation started? I mean, you can try it teaching a three-year-old kid that these are the persons who whom have you to call whom you have to call as Mishri. This person is Maggie. This person is a, your wife, and you have to go and hug her. And you're a three-year-old three kid, and you have to act like you're meeting them for the first time. And when we meet them, you know, we're going to walk through the streets. And here on the other side, that family, you have to act as if we have never met before. You know, that's a lot of acting happening for no money to be earned, for, for proving the religious belief to a third person whom nobody cares about. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot. It's possible. It's, everything is possible in T-Jump's imaginary world. But, you know, this was, this was just talking about practical stuff well, here. Well, again, all religions start with, like, no reward. People are just making stuff up for no reason, and they don't get any reward. So that's not surprising at all. Um, but so so why would that explanation be less plausible than reincarnation? Well, because uh, whenever, uh, you know, you find evidence for, say, somebody has stolen something, and a person comes and says, hey, I have seen this person steal 500 rupees from that corner of the house. And uh, he was wearing these pair, these pairs of shoes and these pair of cloth. And he did it this time. <clears throat> and, you know, you go and let her find out 500 rupees are missing. And the other person is carrying the same piece of cloth and shoes. He went and what came in that car. You know, that's how you do court cases, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a court um, you consider the amount of evidence which is in the in the favor of person not lying but trying to say things truly. So here you have you know a bunch of 50 people, 20 people from one family, 20 people from other fam family who are trying to give witness as this is the kid who you should recount these things right from his birth, and he's doing that for a long time, and we don't know whom he's talking about, whom she's talking about, and he's giving these many details about the previous person. We don't know what's happening. And a person comes and records it, goes and finds that person, and then takes the kid later there and verifies everything in person in front of the kid. And they all are lying just to make a show for reincarnation, for proving the religious belief to their own family members. They're all doing this as a, sh as a show, but they're not earning a penny. They're all doing it as a show. You know, I'm not sure what the kid is ga gaining from all this stuff. Well, like all religions, but so in, in a court case. Uh, testimony is never accepted as evidence of anything that lacks an empirical basis. So miracles, magic, mythical creatures, the paranormal, supernatural, UFOs, no amount of testimony is ever going to be evidence of any of those things because it lacks precedent to use the court case terminology. So in a court case, using your own example, everything you just said would be thrown out of a court case. Like this, this isn't evidence of anything um, because you don't have actually anything beyond psychological phenomenon in people, which can all be explained by the parents taught it to them. Um, so, so I don't, I don't see how the structure of your argument follows here. Like in the court case, this all, this all gets thrown out. Well, wh why is this, why is this paranormal? Reincarnate because there's no evidence of anything beyond physical stuff in the brain. That's well, being some, question. Some, this is evidence. Uh, no, so like there's no prior evidence, no precedent, no past examples of anything outside of physical stuff in the brain to use as a basis to make your argument in a court case. And so that would not be, you would have to actually establish that before you could say someone had testimony, therefore there is this so you're saying because physical thing. So because you're saying that because there has never been any evidence for reincarnation, we can never produce any evidence for reincarnation. Is that what you're no. saying? No. So like, because there's no evidence of a non-physical part of the brain, it's supernatural. That's why, that's what you asked is why would this be considered supernatural? Well, that's something, why is it supernatural? How do you define supernatural? Uh, it's just a 
categorization of saying something that doesn't have an empirical basis yet. So there's no empirical basis yet. So we just that's that what supernatural nature. means, though. Supernatural is <laughs> something that is something that science can't really explain. It's and more this about happens the all the time. Labels. This is more about the court case label. It's not about actually the ontology here. So what? How would a court case determine if testimony would or would not count as evidence for a phenomenon? It would be if that phenomenon has an empirical basis prior to this event, then it would count as evidence. If it doesn't, then it would not count as evidence. So well, part of your objection is an accusation of lying, because there's a lot of people involved here that are saying, you know, we, we know this person hasn't been to this village before. Uh, we know that they weren't, weren't told these things. So there's a, there's a degree of, of saying, oh, all these people must be lying, which becomes like, okay, well, if we can just take a, a research study and say, oh, that's just full of lies, then we can do that to anything. How do we know Arthur Eddington actually recorded what he said he recorded and provided evidence for uh, general theory of relativity? Maybe he just wrote it down because it was more exciting to tell people that's what he reported. Uh, because there is an empirical basis for all that stuff. So testimony is reasonable to believe if there's an empirical basis. It's not if there's no empirical basis. Mm, what, 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 the question what, that that's okay. having a different scale of evidence for things that you already believe in and, and then for things you well, don't already believe in. Well, I'll, yeah. say, this, uh, I'll say this about... Uh, about the testimonies of the people who give, you know, their stories about reincarnation, as long as what they're saying makes logical and rational sense, then, then, then I will be okay with it. You haven't shown, well, you've, you kept saying, giving your opinion that you think it's illogical, but you haven't shown us any way in which it is illogical. I think we have. I think we have. But, but I will grant you <laughs> that if you, no, I'm being serious, but I will grant you that if you can share uh, something that makes logical sense, I will be willing to accept what you have to say. But, what you're, but, but basically what you're presenting is, and I'll correct myself from earlier, you're saying that these people are having um, uh, flashbacks or dreams or whatever uh, regarding them having an emotionally, uh, during an emotional important event or whatever, right? This is what you're saying that they're having, right? Memories. And you're saying that this is proof of reincarnation. I'm telling you from the Christian, I don't know about the atheist worldview, but from the Christian worldview, those ideas get implanted in their heads. By 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 demons, and this is what Christians actually believe. Can you reply so to I don't know where you're getting that from. I'm sorry, say that again. If, if demons can plant memories, then how do I know demons haven't planted my memories of everything prior to last Thursday? I never said they didn't. <laughs> okay. I never said that well, they didn't. And, and I think it depends, that's a, an absurd. And it depends. Worldview, and it depends on what the memories are. Because we have a Bible for that to, to tell us what kind of things it would point so to. Your all mind. the people that remember seeing Jesus resurrected, maybe demons just planted their memories of seeing Jesus resurrected. I mean, you really that would be a really good argument. <laughs> that would be a really good argument, sir, if we didn't have secular and non secular evidence for his, for the resurrection. No, no, no all of them, the, the secular sorry, and the non secular, all had their I'm, memories I'm, planted I'm, by I'm, demons. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. 500 eyewitnesses, an atheist lawyer doing an investigation. You don't want to have that discussion with me. I assure you no, no. of that, all right? I, I, my, your epistemology doesn't even allow me to know that last week existed, and you want me to believe that yes, Jesus it was does. resurrected. Yes, it does. I'm just telling you, we're focusing on these emotionally important events that they supposedly remembered, okay? And then that's it. It's like little bits and pieces that they remember. I'm telling you that those ideas could have been planted into their heads. Now, you can sit there and laugh at it and think it's funny all you want, but it's a better explanation than you telling me that somebody went to bed and, and, and they remember what happened in, when, in Julius, Caesar's, Jul, Julius Caesar's bathroom or whatever when he slipped and fell and hit his head when none of us were there to verify it, to, to see any, anything like that happens. And then you calling it reincarnation. No, it could be a demon that was there that can easily put that into somebody's head to try to push the idea of reincarnation. I know but it's you, funny you, to you, but my, what I'm saying right now refutes what you're saying right now. D but you demons, that a demon demons is not, not not a bad explanation here. <laughs> De demons not not a bad explanation here. Um, but but to I'm clarify, I'm arguing from a, a hold on a minute. I'm arguing from a Christian perspective. I'm not arguing from an atheist perspective. If I was going to argue like you, I would just sit here and be a denialist like you've been doing all night. But I'm not doing that. <laughs> all right. <sighs> anyway, so, you admit uh, that a demon could have planted all my memories of everything prior to last Thursday. I think that basically destroys your argument. Let's move on. No, it doesn't, okay. but, I, but I'll agree to disagree <laughs> okay. with you. I'll okay. agree to disagree. Uh, let's go back to jump. You, you were saying jump that, um, you know, to in case of Arthur Addington, you're saying there's an empirical basis to it. Can you explain that? What do you mean by that? Uh, things that have a past empirical basis, like things that have already been shown to not be imaginary, 
that exists, you can say, I saw a dog. That would be reasonable to believe, anybody's to believe your testimony that you saw a dog because there's past evidence, empirical evidence that shows dogs aren't just a figment of your imagination. But if you said, I saw a unicorn, that wouldn't be evidence because we have no evidence that unicorns exist outside of someone's imagination. So their imaginary testimony would not be a sufficient basis to conclude they are. So until no, you no, have some no, independent- no, but, but, but. What do you mean? I'm asking you that. What do you mean by there's an empirical basis somebody seeing dog in the past? What what is what is? Can you explain that? What is the empirical basis? Can you do some other word instead of empirical there? Uh, so so, like we have their DNA, their phylogeny, their taxonomy, what they're allergic to, how to train them, the physical, genetic makeup, their bone structure, their their fur, skins. We have like actual physical empirical data that they exist outside of our imagination. So there, there is stuff that exists outside of our imagination that shows they exist. So you mean to say, uh, as long as they have a uh, physical body, not it's not, I think empirical is the wrong word to be put there. Probably when you say, as long as they have physical body, then you're ready to believe uh, that they exist. Otherwise, uh, they, don't, no. they don't exist. No, well, it's not okay. about a physical body. Because you just said, phylogeny, you know, DNA, those are all for physical body. Isn't yeah, because those, those are things we have, like, we only have examples of physical stuff that exists. We have no evidence of non-physical stuff. But if there was, like, if someone cast, like, if we had Harry Potter as a real thing, and people could cast spells, and we knew they could cast spells, and we had, like, a big past history of people casting spells, and then someone said, I saw Voldemort cast a spell and kill somebody, that would work, too, because it has a past empirical basis. So it's not about necessarily, it doesn't require physical stuff. It's just that's the yeah. only stuff we actually have past evidence of existing right now. So here, here we're using empirical in a sense as something which has happened in the past a number of times and has been recorded in the past a number of times. Is that, is that no, how using empirical? something no. that has been demonstrated to not be imaginary in the past. Well, okay. And then how, okay. So how would you establish, let's say the case of casting a spell. I think that's much more closer to our example. So how would you establish in the case of casting a spell that that, was, that has an empirical basis to it? If it successfully made novel testable predictions in the past? So that means that somebody casts a spell and before casting a spell, they tell, you know, when I cast a spell, this pillar is going to go down. And if that happens, here you go, that this pillar went down. That means the casting of spell work. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. If you could do that consistently in a large enough basis, yes, that would definitely count. Well, I mean, well, again, large enough could be a very odd number. You know, even if somebody could do that a few times, I would say, you know, that's pretty good for me, but I'm not sure what number you're looking for. Is the number a thousand, a million, then you would accept it? Uh, it depends on the cases. Like if you said, I could generate a gold brick every single time yeah. and you do it 30 times in a row in any condition everywhere across the world and other people can reproduce it, that, that's good enough. So if, so, if you can, so, if you can so, give a methodology to- Got it, got um, it. So in, in, so in your case, um, in, in what you're saying is that as long as we can show that uh, reincarnation can be, can be you know, in some sense, repeated in an experimental setting where a person says, hey, I'm going to reincarnate as this person, and then he's able to do that. And that happens consistently a few times and is recorded, you know, the testament is recorded before and after, something like that, then you will accept that. Yeah, novel prediction. So that, that would be an example of a novel prediction, but any kind of novel predictions would count. Uh -huh. So as, uh, now, in the case of reincarnation, it's a little difficult because, as my friend just shared, uh, usually it's a case of reincarnation where somebody can remember the past life. Is the case where people have some trauma. Now you really can't, uh, you know, uh, you know, plan out a trauma in somebody's life. Hey, I'm gonna, you know, get, get shot by a gun, and then I'm gonna just before dying, somebody can say, Hey, I'm gonna take birth as this person, and you know, and uh, oh, voila, you know, he born like that. So it's very difficult. But there has been a couple of cases of reincarnation recorded by Ian Stevenson, specifically this case, I'm trying to remember, is from Alaska. Um, I'll find the names later. Of this person who told his wife, because he was uh, you know, having some life-threatening disease, he told his wife that I'm going to take birth as, as, as the son of your sister. And he also told what, it, you know, what his features would be and what he would do, at, what would, uh, you know, that when he takes as birth as a son, he will remember his past life, and he will he will tell you about this. And he did that, and there's a you know a good 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 record of, record for that. But again, in the case of reincarnation, it's difficult in some sense to record testimony because as we go forward in the modern world, there's technology, there's social media, and it's becoming more and more difficult to maintain privacy, which is in, important for in order to make the case, in order to make a strong case, because you can always look up things online, and you can always make a case. You know, this person may have looked up the details of the other person online, or this parent may have looked up a case of the person online. But 
We do have a good case to be made in the case of mediumship. That's why I shared that evidence also in the beginning, where, <clears throat> let me repeat the experiment setup again quickly in 30 seconds, that you have a medium, you have a sitter, and you have an experimenter. The, 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 the sitter tells the name of a person who is deceased in this life, and just the name itself, but the sitter doesn't know whom he's giving the name to. The medium comes to know about the name only, and he or she gives a reading. Now that reading, is du uh, duplicated by some third party, third party, like some other person, and it's changed up with other bunch of stuff. And those two readings are given to one, the original one coming from the medium, and the second, the decoy one coming from the medium. And they both are given to the read to the uh, sitter to rate whether any of them meet the details of the previous personality he was asking about. And these details are not just in details like you know uh, he was a happy guy or slow guy very you know, concrete you know, uh, quantitative details. And Weinberg Research Center led by Dr. Julia has done thorough research on this. And they did this experiment with a bunch of 33 mediums. And they did 60 cases each time. And they repeated the experiment number of times. Number of other people also repeated the experiment. And in each of these cases, they found significant evidence to, uh, that the mediums were able to share um, details of the previous personality or the discarnate person, you know, much more significantly than the baseline. So in this case, you have an experiment set up. Well, then they should have won the James Randi challenge and won a million dollars, but they didn't. Probably, probably fake. What is the James Randi challenge? Uh, the James Randi challenge is an offer for a million dollars for anybody who can demonstrate any kind of reincarnation, supernatural, anything. And they'll give, give you a million dollars. So if if that had actually worked, they would have won a million dollars. Um, so it's so, the, so not so not so not the post has changed. Previously, the post what? was we have to make a case, empirical case. Now you're saying that what? the case is that that we win James Radian challenge to prove it to them. <laughs> no, no, no. So, again, so, the so post keeps on changing. Okay, that's fine. You you can Sorry, make yeah. up a story that sounds nice, but there's nothing to actually verify it. Like it it failed every single scientific test. Like this yeah, is not I tell stories and you, scientific. I tell stories and you tell facts. That's correct. Yep. <laughs> So this That's is this is here. a published paper done by researchers where they controlled it and, and other researchers said they used good method. The fact that it hasn't run some prize from the Randy uh, organization, the, the, that's like an argument from authority. You know, if if it were true, then they would have received a million dollars from this organization. Well, How, that was we don't, no. That's fair. That's fair. So I didn't literally mean it had to win that specific challenge. The argument here is that if it did discover some entirely new ontology, you would have won a Nobel Prize. You would have had extremely well um, anointed by all kinds of scientists. It fails because it just can't do that. Can't be replicated. Doesn't work. All of no. the subsequent tests fail. It has never it, been shown it, to it, be it, the case. It has been replicated by another group of researchers from Paris. I can give you the name of the, of the scholars too. Now, the question is, um, now we are going in a different realm. So the first argument was, can we make an empirical case? Have we presented that? Now, the question no, is, the, the answer can is you can can can't. No, no, now you're changing it. Now you're saying that the-, the No, no, the, I haven't changed the, anything. I haven't the, changed anything. Now you're saying the standard that it should, here, convince, it should convince everybody, no, 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 or majority no, no, of scientists. No, no, that's, no, that's what you're saying. No, no, no. By empirical basis, it has to be repeatable by the experts in the field. If you can't convince them, yeah. you don't have an empirical basis. Well, the, the fact that you make it. up a story isn't an empirical basis. They repeated They repeat it. I can give the name of scholars. So tell the experts in the field, convince the experts, win a Nobel Prize, and they'll be like, yep, you're right. So, your, okay, so, 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 yeah, okay, go ahead, Rajan. Your argument is a misunderstanding of the nature of scientific paradigms and how people operate according to a paradigm and, and you know, their skepticism is far higher towards things that don't for nope, the paradigm because one false. day the paradigm shifts when germ theory was proposed it was rejected so badly that the person who proposed it ended up with mental illness because of how badly they were treated now it's widely accepted but it didn't cotton on very quickly uh yeah that's because of take a religious long dogma it doesn't exist now so now if you present it and you can demonstrate it you win like no one cares that do that no, stigma doesn't exist today. people didn't stop being religious just because they gave up religion people are just religious about different things i mean have a look at the left nope. in america right now they're nope, just as religious that's... without religion they're just uh, all that i want to know is what the heck view. is a traumatized soul that's all i want to know well, well first thing is what is the traumatized mind there's no conspiracy or bias in science if you had demonstrated it they wouldn't reject it on bias so that's just a, a what is it paranoia a, um well, conspiracy the, the, theory in science to reject your interest. No, it's just your, your information is bad. A, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's a dialectical response to what you said. What, what we really exactly need to do is, is a traumatized this is mind. Evidence. What exactly is a traumatized mind when somebody's not alive no more? 
the 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 trauma it, it leaves an impression on the soul. Just like anything leaves an impression on the soul. Trauma is just a, it can show, be a, show show how show how prove it. That's what the the evidence of people who remember past lives and have birthmarks that match. No, that's the that's the claim. Life. That's the claim. Prove no, that's that the evidence. Soul. There's documented prove cases that of this stuff. No, no, no. We don't have documented anything. Well, about what that. would evidence look prove, like? Prove prove that souls can be traumatized to the point that they lose all of their memories when they're dead and they're transferring from one body to another. And better yet, because I know me, me, me or so that we lose our memories. About this. Me and T-Jump purpose... hasn't talked about this yet. Can you can you prove to me, can, can you introduce me anybody, anybody that used to be a dog, that their past life was a dog or a cat or whatever? Do you have any evidence for that? We're not, we're not claiming to have evidence for that. We're just saying there's some amount of evidence for reincarnation. We've, we give, give, we've given very specific examples. We're not just saying so you don't have that, so you don't, animals in previous lives. So, so you never heard of a testimony of somebody mm-hmm. having a dream by sniffing, sniffing another dog's Yeah, yeah there, are, like there are people who remember past lives as animals. That, that is there. But we're not making a case for that today. We, we're not claiming to have strong evidence for that. We're claiming to have evidence for reincarnation. So how do you know that a soul can be traumatized? We're both, well, yeah, I might as well say we're both theists. So how do you know that a soul can be traumatized to the point that they lose all their memories? We, we as Christians, we believe that, that, that when a person dies, all of their memories, everything that they are goes, goes and stands before almighty God. Yeah. Well, that's your belief. We're talking about evidence here today. I understand that. Where is your evidence? That's what I want to know. The evidence is the cases we presented of people who have memories and accuracy and birthmarks and behaviors and emotions, which match a previous life. No, those things are pre are, are presupposed as being in previous lives. There's no proof that they came from previous lives. We're not claiming where, where's proof. the We're evidence. Have for evidence. That. Okay, so where's the evidence then? Where where is it? So when you have somebody who remembers the past life of somebody who died with a bullet wound, they have emotions that match the person. They have a grudge with somebody who owed the money. They have a grudge with the you know the, sometimes in one case the person tried to kill kill when they were young the person who killed them in the previous life. That the emotions match the previous life. <laughs> And that the if I can be honest, match, I had and they know a dream. detailed information about this life that they couldn't have known otherwise. This is the kind of evidence. I had about. a dream. I had a dream that I went into the Black Lion to form Voltron. It doesn't mean that I was part of the Voltron force, or I lived the life of a person who's part of the Voltron force. It doesn't mean that I that, 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 because yeah, I had but, a dream that I was Freddy Krueger. That one day, you know, in a past life, I was Robert England. Uh, go, going for the role of a nightmare on Elm Street. You're straw manning the evidence. Can evidence. you? Re- I'm not straw manning. Can anything. you respond I'm to the actual said. evidence that we're presenting? You know, so like, you're not like presenting any suggest- evidence. You're making a claim. That's what you're doing. You're right. not presenting well, any evidence. If you're going to show manus, then there's nothing for me to reply to. Let's see if someone. There's, any there, other there, there's no proof of reincarnation. You need, you need to just admit it. It's a faith based claim that you believe that these people are having these dreams. You believe that they're, you know, sharing their their emotionally important events that happened in the past life, and you're calling it reincarnation. You know what I'm calling it? I'm calling it a bad observation uh, uh, of a bad you know, uh, explanation for what they're talking about. All right. Do you have I, actual I, evidence that can be measured, that can be repro- that, that that can be shown over and over and over again that would prove that reincarnation is actually true. So I'm not I'm not following GMAT here. Like, yeah, if you could actually show you're not supposed people- to follow me. This is a theist to theist discussion here. <laughs> I'm just trying to ask him to give me the, the evidence there. So okay, so, so it's, I don't want you evidence. answering for wait, him. I don't wait, want you answering for him. I want him to wait, answer himself. Wait, wait, so, I want so, him to answer. So it would uh, be I, James. James, I want him to answer my question. James, I just so want I'd him like, to answer like my to, question. I'd like to comment here. So it would definitely. I would be like out, for him to answer wait. the question and not okay. you. That's Let's fine. see. Yeah. How about how about we? Given that the question was directed toward Arjuna, why don't we give Arjuna a chance to respond first, and then Tom, if you want to <laughs> add to that, you're welcome to. All right. So G Man is just flat straw manning our evidence repeatedly over and over again. He's almost not even worth replying to. So I found the numbers uh, that I mentioned to uh, my opening. So the when Stan Stevenson did his research, he broke up a human body into 160 equal sized squares with a grid so that he could give statistical uh, probabilities to the chances of the birthmarks corresponding to uh, wounds on the body of the deceased individual. If the, so the chance of having a single birthmark corresponding to a wound on the previous individual is one in 160. When you have a bullet entry and exit wound, it becomes one in 160 times one in 160. So the chances become one in 25,000. And we're not just talking about like going all over the globe and finding any one person who has any bullet 
wounds which correspond to this individual. We're talking about someone who has emotions and memories which correspond to details of an individual who's already been identified. So we've already narrowed it down at this point. Well, okay. so one, those numbers are absolutely wrong. Um, the, the 160 times 160 is false. That would assume that a bullet entry wound could then exit at any of the other 160 locations in the body, which is obviously false. Like if you have a bullet entry wound at your head, it's not going to enter exit at your toe. So the, the stats there are just obviously false. Like you wouldn't times 160 by 160 there. But I mean, yes, what you guys no, wait, I mean, would, with the bu the bullet, but we're talking about the birthmarks. The birthmark can be literally no, anywhere. No, no, no. Well, like remember, there's a bullet entry wound and a bullet exit wound and so if the bullet entry wound maxes matches that would be a one in 160 chance and then if the bullet exit wound matches you said the number to calculate that would just be another times 160 but that would be false because it's you wouldn't have the bullet wound put the bullet wound couldn't exit at any other the other points in the body there's a specific amount that they could potentially exit from and so it wouldn't actually be 160 times 160 the math there would just be wrong um so, but I do want to say that, yes, what you guys are presenting would be evidence if it could be corroborated. Absolutely. That if you could show that kids gained information that couldn't have been gained in any other way, um, that would count as evidence. The problem is, is that all the information you present can be gained in other ways that are far simpler. Well, they are simpler, but um, if, the, if the person, the family lived close by, they're quite, they're very, they're far simpler if it's only if it was a kid who was not more than three years old, they are far simpler if the kid is asked to identify persons of the other family. They are far simpler if they're not if the kid was not asked to show the emotions. So for all these different reasons, whether it be behavior, the persons, the location, the distances, and the events leading up to it, we are asking the three-year-old kid to be as smart as an adult. Even as the adult, I will fail to you know exactly replicate what we were being asked by a three-year-old kid, unless I had lived that life in the past myself. So, um, you know, uh, going back to the point, uh, we had present, I presented another set of evidence, which has been done in, a, in an experimental lab. And you pointed that you will accept an evidence only when it is accepted by, when it, whenever it can win the Nobel Prize. If that's your standard of how research should be done, then practically every paper which is published, as if it's a Nobel paper, they all have to win Nobel Prizes. I guess we should start a Nobel Prize committee for every paper which makes an extraordinary claim. Because well, that's no, that's, that's not uh, the only thing required is that you have to get the consensus of experts in the field to accept your work. The people who are qualified to assess whether or not what you're saying is true have to say, yes, it's true. And that and has are, not occurred. Who are experts in this field of reincarnation? Uh, the scientists are experts. The people who publish in fields regarded to psychology, neurology, biology, any scientific field that shows this is not a thing. So could this be explained by psychology? Yes. Could it be explained by fraud? Yes. They would all have to look at the information you have to publish in those fields and be like, yeah, these are not better explained by these other things. Um, you mentioned that it'd be easier if you made the kids not have adult level skills. Again, there are Asian kids who can play violin better than most adults. Uh, this is not terribly hard thing to explain um but yeah so you you would need to actually convince the experts in all the fields of actual science that this is a real thing and not just well i asked you which part you said psychology so in the field of psychology this is already an established understanding that these whether it be outer body experiences near death experiences or mediumship it's, it's it's something which they accept as something which they can't explain uh, they don't claim that it is all fraud. That's not the opinion of the majority right. understanding. Well, well, absolutely, that's totally true. Just like so, in the, whereas, wait, 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 wait. So you, just like whereas, in the field. Wait, 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 wait. I didn't finish. I didn't finish. I didn't finish. Oh. Whereas you are claiming it to be all fraud, or it can be explained by psychology. That's not their opinion. So in psychology, it can be explained as being an unknown psychological feature. We don't know exactly which psychological feature, but psychological features can explain every single one of the points of data. Just like a UFO can be explained by lots of different things. Like it can be explained by a plane. We don't, did we know for sure it was a plane? No. So all of the features you explained can be explained by known psychological phenomenon. Do we know particularly which exact phenomenon occurred in that case? No, that's why it's considered unknown. So none of, none of, the consensus in psychology does not agree that near-death experience or reincarnation actually occur. They explain that, well, we don't know exactly what's going on there, just like we don't know the origin of life. But yeah, the consensus is it's natural. Well, the consensus is that, um, our, our, you know, that there is no current understanding, no current, current paradigm which can explain it. 
but uh, can we say that it's unnatural? Well, we cannot say because we can never rule out all the natural causes. So given the definition which you give, give it to supernatural, you know that that creates a problem. You're saying since everything is natural, there can never be any supernatural. So an, a case can never I be made for a su su supernatural case. And that's what you're saying indirectly. You're saying that no. um, because um, the psychologists are saying that uh, you know we don't have a natural explanation for it. And since in the past, we haven't have ever used an, a non-natural explanation for anything. That means in the future, we don't need to use any natural non-natural explanation for it. That means, you know, in future, we may be able to provide an explanation for it. So no. forget, about all, forget about all this evidence. No, no, it just requires that you present novel testable predictions like every novel thing invented into any scientific field. So if you can well, present the novel testable predictions, which you said can't be done for reincarnation because like all things that it can't be done for, it's probably just imaginary and not real. Well, that's uh, why I, could, I bought... That's why I bought the case of that's why I bought the case of mediumship because that has been done in an experimental lab and it, it's novel predictable predictions there. Okay, so demonstrated to the consensus of field in psychology and actual science, then they yeah, accept it. It's, it's, it's published well, widely don't. in the field of psychology. P published doesn't mean accepted by the consensus. Published means published. So there's lots of things that are published that are not accepted by the consensus. Well, the that's point of, you. What, what did you what, what what is the criteria for you to accept something? Accept. There, there, there are scholars who are publishing the, who are psychologists themselves who are belong to different schools in different yeah. parts of the, different parts of the world and they're publishing it regularly in uh, and they're doing these experiments regularly. I'm asking you what is the problem with the experimental setup? You don't have a problem. I'm asking you are the scholars? No, no, no. no are, I, I, I explain this. I explain this. Let me say, so the the criteria is you have to convince the other experts in the field who are qualified to assess your study. Like I am not qualified to assess your study. I can't read the study and know what's right or wrong with it. The experts in the field can. You need to convince them. And if you convince them, then I'll accept it. Well, you telling it. me that your study is perfect does not going to convince me your study is perfect. They accept it. What, no, they don't. How, how do you they accept it's a published paper. It does not convince anybody. The majority, the consensus of experts says it's complete bunk. Oh, show me that. Who says that? Mediumship uh, research done by Winbuck Research Center is bunk. Show me that. Who says that? The conclusion is bunk. So that's that's the no, part. No, no, no. You, okay, but show me that. Who says that? Yes. I, there's an interview I have with several different psychologists on this topic. Okay, so, yeah. show, okay what are they saying? That is bunk, that there's no such evidence of any such thing of reincarnation, okay. death experience is all junk. No, we're not talking about experiment. I just said what? mediumship experiment conducted by Winbuck Research Center by Julia Bechel. Well, all, all research done in the field is bunk. All of it. How? Every I single bit all, of it. I didn't say all. I asked you no, specific, no, no, I asked no, you specific no, no, no. experiments of mediumship done in experimental so, lab so, with these so, kind of blind settings. I, so I covered that. So if literally all of it is junk and none of it convinces the consensus, that means every single individual example is not sufficient to convince the consensus. Well, you assume, you're assuming in the case of the scholars that they are in some sense omniscient. They know every, they know what, everything they're talking about. You know, I'm I'm pulling up an experiment, an interview with this first scholar who's saying everything is bunk and I take it for granted. Well, that's not how it works. If no, they, no, no, no. The, the people who are, are experts in the field are experts in the field. Yes, which means they they are up to date on all of the most recent research in the field. That's kind of what it means to be an expert. So they're aware of the research done in the field and show, yeah, this doesn't work. Well, it, it, you know, the fields of science have become so huge that in this in this modern day, you really can't claim. That a psychologist knows everything or everything else. If, if that was the case, you know, and you go to a doctor in a hospital, you know, and you're showing them some ailment, they don't claim to know about everything. They say go to an expert. You go to an expert, they may also say, you know, I'm not an expert on this field, I'm an expert on this field. You go to this specific field and expert. Yeah. So yeah, to yeah, call I agree. To, so to call an, an you know an, an expert in the field of psychologists who's saying that all near death experiences on out of body experiences are all false, they're all corrupt. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm an authority and I, I know what all the uh, evidence, all the research which is happening in this field and it's all bunk. That's it. That's my statement. And that's how I rule. Well, that's how you don't understand. Science is not such a field where you have, you know, consensus for everything and every on each and every topic. There are, these are fields of science which are currently developing. People are trying to understand it. They're trying to understand why mediums are able to produce such findings. They're trying to understand why such experiment. So why, why was this? Why was this experimental result? You know, why we had this result in the experiment? So, instead of being, you know, close-minded, hey, everything is bunk. Anything non-natural is bunk. But being open and trying to understand why this happened, how this happened, and and, and trying to understand it better. That's how the scientists are moving forward. But they're not like you know, close-minded and just saying, hey, an expert says it is fault. Everything else is corrupt. Nothing. Everything else will be thrown out.
Right. I've so so some... I, I agree with most of what you said there. The problem is, is that we know a better explanation for that, which is psychological priming, which is why James Randi can replicate all of the results by being just a fake magician, unless you think he's also a medium. So James yeah. Randi t- hasn't done anything towards this reincarnation research, to my knowledge. Uh, like all of it can be replicated by those things. He had he hired two of his students to go in and fake the mediumship and psychic stuff in front of the scientists to prove the point that they can be faked in front of scientists in the same way that is done by the study. So the, the study that Siddharth has quoted, that one couldn't be faked. Uh, James yes, okay. Randy literally, fake literally, no, not, not with the methods they used. Literally, any study can be faked. So you, you can find methodological flaws in these studies. Never perfect. Okay, sh- tell me what's the point. I'd have to look at the study again. You're asked. You need to ask the people who are experts in the field who are qualified to do this. You need to convince them. So maybe yeah. we can do this again, and we can go, go into the actual studies. We'd actually email James with the cases we were planning on presenting, in hopes that you guys could. Well, have I'm an still going to give you the same answer. You need to convince the experts in the field who are qualified to evaluate this and replicate the studies. So I've got two responses to that. One is we've got actually I've got two quotes here which are positive from experts in the field. So the Journal of the American Medical Association reviewed one of Dr. Ian Stevenson's books in 1975 and stated that in regard to reincarnation, he has painstakingly and unemotionally collected a detailed series of cases in which the evidence is difficult to explain on any other grounds. An additional Carl Sagan, the late astronomer, was very skeptical of non-mainstream work, but wrote, there are three claims in in the parapsychology field which in my opinion deserves serious study, with the third being that young children sometimes report details of a previous life which upon checking turn out to be accurate and which they could not have known in any other way than reincarnation. And the other point is I can can present a plausible hypothesis that religious people aren't the only people who are religious. Scientists also have views which they like to believe, which they hold strongly, which they're skeptical about evidence against, which they hold different standards when viewing evidence against their views than when viewing evidence for their views. So this isn't a conspiracy theory. This is just human nature. People tend to, you know, confirmation bias, group think, uh, their careers are also dependent on them towing party lines. You know, if, if somebody comes out and says they don't believe in evolution, they can lose their job at a university, for example. There's, there's, there's a lot on the line. If, if you can argue for what people want you to argue for, you get promotions, you get grants and so on. There's so many factors at play. So I'm not saying that I need to prove this. I just need to say this is a plausible hypothesis. It's and not. then the debate becomes, let's look at the actual evidence. So, yeah, so, so it's, not, the it's, evidence, not, it's not a plausible hypothesis. I mean, you can say that, but you'd have to demonstrate. So I did. So, I mean, it's it, everything you said is more plausibly explained by their parents <laughs> psychologically manipulated them and the studies were manipulated. No, no, no. The, 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 what I'm saying is a plausible hypothesis is that scientists can have some degree of bias or there's pressures on them which cause them to say certain things or have certain opinions. That's, yeah, that's, that we, that's, not, that's not a plausible explanation. So, again, if there's a better how explanation... How is it not plausible? Because if there's a better explanation for literally all of the data points you said, which is very obvious and known to everyone by everything, like, oh, look, there's a, a print in the snow. Is it a horse? Yeah, it's a horse. So if there's a more plausible explanation which has a ton of backing evidence that already exists, then it's plausible to reject it, not based on bias, but based on, yeah, we have past evidence that this is the better explanation. So no, but the way we answer that is by looking at the actual evidence. The, like uh, the hypothesis yeah, yeah. that scientists can be wrong for sociological reasons or psychological reasons is a, is is never a plausible a good hypothesis. This is never a good argument. So, I, so all, all I'm doing, I'm just using it in a dialectical sense in order to respond to you saying we need to meet a certain goalpost that you've set. I'm saying we don't need to meet that goalpost. We yeah, just need to look at the actual evidences of, of the case we're presenting. You're if your qualified. hypothesis is true, then we should be able to find errors with the cases we presented flaws in the methodology, you know, fraud, problems with the evidence. We should be able to find that if your hypothesis is true. Mm, if we don't find any no. errors with the evidence we're presenting, then, and you just want to say, oh, but you haven't convinced the scientific consensus, then I, then my hypothesis that, that my uh, posit that the hypo- scientific consensus can no, be wrong. subject to group think, wrong. psychological so, biases so and if, if, I, if I provide you a paper in quantum mechanics and you can't find a flaw in it, does that mean it's right? No, you're not qualified to assess the paper. You need to give the paper to the people who are qualified to assess the paper and convince them. What we, what we do on this stage means nothing. We don't matter. You need to convince the experts in the field. And if you can't do that, that's a good reason to conclude you're wrong not bias on the experts, you're just wrong. So quantum physics is a very different thing from, you know, memories and, you know, the controls on how those memories are recorded and how the data is collected to see if those memories correspond to a previous personality who existed. So no. if you want to say, 
that we need to you need to be an expert in order to critique the research then you need to demonstrate that the subject matter is unintelligible to regular people so can you demonstrate you know quantum physics you can very easily demonstrate that quantum physics is unintelligible to a layperson can you demonstrate that the research of dr ian stevenson is unintelligible no, to un- unintelligible is irrelevant here what matters is can you assess well, the data is- and know enough about the 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 background information of how studies are done and how to make them reliable and how p testing is done or p statistics are done and how to make them reliable you don't know that you don't know that i don't know that it's very complicated to know the methodology to make sure a study is actually rigorous and works you aren't qualified to do that i'm not scientists are you need to make them do the work you need to convince the experts whether or not you can understand it makes no difference. You need to be able to know all the background information to make a reliable study and to be able to repeat it. You and me don't have that. I'll right. take that one, Siddharth. G-Man, so, do you have any I, thoughts as well? No, I said everything I'm going to say. Uh, T-Jump pretty much dominated the thing. So, I mean, it's, it's all Thank good. You, they, haven't answered, they haven't answered none of my questions, so I'm just waiting for them to deal with what I said. Shortly, so, we'll go into Q&A. But we'll give you okay. a chance to respond to Darth. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, so, 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 is making the point that you know, in order to accept any evidence, we need to convince the majority of an opinion. Uh, you know, in regards to an evidence. Yeah, you know, that's how uh, we can say. You know, in some sense, you know, scientific uh, contributions are made. That you know, first of all, there's a group of people who make a, you know an extraordinary or, or a claim, and it's accepted by a bunch of researchers. And all the time, if that holds more value or more, you know, explanation than the current paradigm, and that, you know, that new paradigm starts gets gets holding its base, and it all the time it spreads over and it becomes in a majority opinion. Now let's see, you know, can a non-natural explanation really become the uh, the majority opinion? Let's see. Now, uh, you know, in the case of we have to look back in, in the past. In the 17th century, um, we, when, when the scholars, or in the 15th century or 16th century, when scholars were coming together and they were saying that, you know, hey, the earth is the one which is moving around the sun, not the other way. The Christian uh, who were, you know, the rulers who were, you know, the Christian priests at that time, they were objecting it. And anybody who made a claim against such, such a statement was shot down. So, um, you know, is it possible that we can, can, can we see a similar behavior right now? Uh, because the, uh, you know, in some sense, the scientists have their tongue in the cheek with this, with this, you know, experiment, with this, you know, this data. Because if anything, if in any case, you know, any non-natural explanation comes around and or, or non-natural, um, ex, uh, you know, paradigm starts getting hold, that would destroy the current scientific paradigm. So, uh, is uh, is there some sociological basis to uh, scientists not accepting? such an experiment, which is done such a formal manner, and so many cases such in such a formal manner, do they have any sociological bias mm-hmm. to not accept such, such an evidence? Yes, there's a strong case to be made. So um, uh, do I see that in future, a majority of scientists accepting this evidence? I don't, I don't expect it because currently, as Arjun pointed out, there's a huge sociological bias um, amongst the scientists to not accept anything non-natural. And because they have that motive or I, I don't see that in a majority of scientists accepting such a position. But the open-minded scientists, as Arjun pointed out, are, are, are interested in, in, in studying this, and they're open to this idea of knowing this, you know. But uh, sorry to say, most of the scientists are not, uh, you know, in an open-minded uh, you know, case. So they have a bias there, and because of that, I don't expect them to ex- accept um, these set of experiments, all they've done in an amazing manner, all the, all the evidence presented for reincarnation, which has been thoroughly documented in 2,500 cases and continues to be documented further. With that, we will jump into the Q&A. Also, want to let you know, folks, several things. One in particular, we are going to start doing panels, in particular, six to eight people on the show at a time. And so if you happen to love debating, or if you have a channel that you want to get greater exposure, in other words, more awareness that people would hear about it, just like I can say tonight, all of our guests are linked in the description. So if you want to check out their links, you certainly can. Want to let you know about these panels? They're coming soon. And so want to let you know, I'm going to post shortly the link for how you can sign up for those panels. Sometimes we'll have panels on politics. Sometimes we'll have panels on religion and atheism topics. 
topics, and it'll probably be two or three topics at a time. And we're all, basically, you could say, it's a great opportunity for newcomers who want to get on the show for the first time, just to give us, say, kind of a, a test in terms of whether or not it's a good fit. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So with that, thanks so much for your question. Lover Man Cowboy says, so under reincarnation, do you keep the same personality traits? So like if you defend child abusers when reincarnated, would you still defend child abusers? Like after you're reincarnated and brought back. So general mentality and attitudes are carried over. It's, it's all the subtle things about a person. Um, so if somebody's, you know, got some kind of addiction in one life, they'll, you know, like an alcoholic is, has a good chance of being an alcoholic in the next life. And a saintly person will carry their saintly qualities with them into the next life. But, you know, the, the sort of skills that you build on top of that, you, you will need to recover back again. So if you have an attitude for success, then you're likely to succeed in the next life, but you're still going to have to build up your success from scratch. You got it. And thanks very much for this question. Dragnock Silvas says, can G-Man summarize his opponent's arguments? G-Man, what do you think Siddharth and Arjuna would say if you were going to give a gist type of summary? Uh, I cannot answer that question. I have a contract video against him, uh, legal stuff, and I don't want nothing to do with the individual. <laughs> This one, nice save. This one coming in from Indigo Butterfly 2007 says G Man looking cute in his fit. His what is fit? What does that mean, G Man? I don't know. Okay, well you look cute. And Indigo Butterfly strikes again, saying, "Hey, G Man, what was their main argument and evidence?" Also, thanks again for let's see the money and iPod. Love you. Uh, I have a contract video against Indigo too, so I, I can't really say anything about her either. <laughs> Next up, Displays Gamer. <laughs> Any contracts? Okay, Displays Gamer says, is knowledge imprinted on the soul or is it stored in the brain? If soul, how does this function work? Uh, well, you want to answer it's, you get there's subtle and gross so there's on the gross level you get lots of things stored there and then on the subtle level you get the more subtle aspects stored there so uh, a, a degree of knowledge is stored in the brain but then of course with near-death experiences a lot of that also seems to come back i mean you you get like what is it eben alexander who had like complete his brain completely destroyed and it came back and he had full cognitive functions um so i i, I think more what it is is that the, the physical brain is a, is a an instantiation of it, like a, a gross thing that's formed. So the subtle energy forms the gross. Um, do you want to comment on that, Siddharth? Uh, well, uh, uh, according to the Vedas, uh, which we didn't bring in, the, the model which they present is that there is a soul which is, has a covering of subtle body, and then there's a covering of gross body. And the soul is a source of, you know, all the initiation. It gives all the energy. And then the subtle body provides... Um, you can say the programs and then the gross body provides, you know, further, you know, an instances as um, Arjun is pointing out. So when the gross body is destroyed, according to the the, the, Puran, the Vedas, the subtle body can again regenerate, you know, the parts of the gross body if need be. But that only happens, you know, in special cases, very rare cases. But uh, the point being that uh, the subtle body is storing, you know, very, uh, you can say higher level paradigms or higher level programming, you know, codes there. Whereas the gross body is, is storing something very day to day information and, and, and data information and stuff like that. In some cases, when as, as we saw, when there's trauma, somehow the subtle body is also able to collect data from the gross and and use that initiation and again begin from that place again. It's a very complex subject matter. I mean, you're invited to study. There's a book called Patanjali Yoga Sutras, which discusses this in detail. Um, and, um, you know, if you're interested in that subject, I highly recommend that. Also, another book is Srimad Bhagavatam. You can find that on the website called vedabase.com. And you can look at, read up there. Canto 3 discusses body, subtle body, and gross body. So vedabase.com, Srimad Bhagavatam. That's the book. Gotcha. System. Thank you very much. We are going to jump into this next question, which is from I'm Sawi Wilson says, Are those Rev's headphones? Who is Rev? 
I don't know who he is, and I don't know what he's talking about, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> yeah, to hell with Rev. All right, next one. Snake was right. Thanks for your question. It says, if you don't retain memories or identity, how is the soul still you? Also explain the mechanisms involved if you can. Well, the simplest way of defining you would be uh, a, the, a continuous first-person experience. So if it's the same you that's having the experience in this life and in the next life, then it would be you. Uh, whatever else is carried over is not so important. Uh, the soul is said to have an identity, a spiritual identity, which is covered over. So none of these identities that we have in any of these bodies is actually who we really are. It's just a, a dressing that we put on. So the fact that we lose a dressing and take on a different one, you know, if I get into one out of one car and into a different vehicle, I haven't changed who I am. I've just changed the vehicles. You got it. And thank you very much for this question coming in from Snake Was Right. Says, if you don't retain memories or identity, how is the soul still? No, oh, we got that one. Sorry. He just says that. MO, thanks for your super chat, which was deleted. Do not attack the guests. Attack the arguments, folks. Troll toll. Says, pay the troll toll to get the boy's soul. That sounds weird. Is that one of your buddies, Tom? <laughs> next up the next one bio the uh the biologist bum thanks for your question says what happens when the sun burns out in five billion years and life on earth is extinct where do our souls go then you want to ask this at yeah so uh, as explained that the uh, there's a subtle realm known as uh mahavishnu and in that subtle realm the souls go for like a sleep uh or like you know a period of uh, dormant period, or dormancy for next 13, 13 billion years, and sorry, no, eight billion years, and then they come back. And they're given another body, and the cycle starts again. You got it, and thank you very much for this question coming in from Nick James. Says, "G man, are you being a misotheist to a god who does reincarnations of the souls?" Hashtag G man, the misotheist. I don't understand the question. Yeah, what is a misotheist, G-Man? I have no this? idea. Okay, I see. have no idea. Next up, Git Stanfield says, given the fact there is no clear-cut definition of life nor consciousness at the moment, do the proponents of reincarnation think it's possible to, quote, unquote, come back as algae or a virus? Why or why not? You want to comment, Sadat? Um... Uh, well, we we don't have an, a, 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 a you know a common understanding of life or consciousness, but we do have an underlying <laughs> understanding of life and consciousness. We talk about life. We say you are alive, I'm alive. Are you alive? I think you are alive. So you know, um, based on that common understanding, we can talk about you know you know coming back also because if somebody is uh, is alive, he can recall things about his life. He can recall who he is. He can tell who, where does he live, who are his family members. What does he do? And if somebody, if a kid is born and at a, at a young age, he's able to recall, you know, things like these, then we can use the word coming back. So I don't see any problem with that. And I agree. We should look into this topic of what is life? What is consciousness? These are good questions. And I'm glad you're thinking about those questions. You got it. Rev News Radio says, if reincarnation is true, then you might be able to beat Dragnacht in a future life. Um <laughs> Tom, do you have some sort of beef with Dragnacht? All right. Farron Salas says, for the sake of the debate, the idea of a quote-unquote soul is granted, but we can substantiate that we even have... But we can't substantiate that we even have souls. Just a friendly PSA. We can hear you, Candy, g <laughs> <laughs> I found it what mesotheism is. It's the hatred actually, of God or I, gods. I, actually, I got the answer to the question I was asked earlier. My indigo, uh, she was asking me about what was the topic about. And I just want to show her this. Uh, I, think, I know I think, she doesn't have none of it. So I just want to show her this real quick. There right there? Their argument? Right there? Okay. Okay. All right. Let's keep this your indigo. personal squabbles <laughs> out of this. Let's go ahead, uh, Siddhartha or Arjuna, if you want to respond while G-Man shows off the Benjamins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something she doesn't have. Uh, do you want to go explain the misotheist thing you were saying? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. I found a definition of misotheism. It's the hatred of God or hatred of gods. Uh, was that last one a question? That sounded like a comment. Yeah, more of a comment. Agreed. If you want to respond, you can. 
I mean, uh, I, I want to add yeah. a, a couple, one thing uh, in regards to you know the point we made earlier about being Mr. Theist. I think uh, uh, as, as a as a practitioner of Krishna consciousness, or Hare Krishna, uh, I'm not opposed to Christianity or other religions. I th- I feel that uh, G Man doesn't really understand the principles which we were speaking from, and he feels that in some sense we are against his his principles or his theism. But uh, as such, we are of the opinion that there is one God and He has many names, and He comes in different parts of the world. So can I respond uh, to that? Yeah. Can, so can I, I respond I, to that? I, just one thing. So I, I don't have any any I don't have any hatred for G Man or you know, all of us, and uh, I think he has to have a little bit broader outlook towards what we're trying to present here. Yes, he yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I would like to respond to that. You said that. Oh, you, first of all, are you a Hindu? I'm. I, I practice Hare Krishna. It's not a Hinduism. No, okay. I don't believe that you believe in only one God. I believe that you believe in multiple gods, multiple, multiple, I don't believe, multiple, multiple, I'm multiple de- gods. At least I can say what I believe in, or you want to be having authority on that too. <laughs> this one coming in from don't John. Worry. Don't worry. I'll have something to say about it later. Don't worry about it. Ooh. Okay. And, and I'll see you in the parking lot afterwards. John <laughs> Pullman. Not in the parking lot. No, no, no. I got a YouTube channel and I debunk this garbage all the time. So go ahead. Juicy. Don Fullman says G Man wouldn't Jesus have been considered reincarnated since he became a different version of his past self after the resurrection. No, it's not even close to what happened. That's my answer for that. Brute that's fact pod- dumb. That's just dumb. That's that's not even remotely close to what it is. Okay. Brute fact- <laughs> Root Facts Podcast says G-Man only speaks for his version of Christianity. What is my version of Christianity? That's what I like to know. Everybody like to know what my version of Christianity is. I keep hearing that, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's <Displace>. just about <laughs> Me neither. everybody in sound doctrine believes in it. Displace Gamer says... Even he- James... <laughs> Go ahead. Next up, Displace Gamer says G-Man made great points on how God doesn't exist. <laughs> you know your audience is just phenomenal james i get dumber every time i come on this show and talk to your audience i really do your audience is just so dumb it's not even funny anyway let's continue you, you, All right. you attack the arguments not the people well to be fair audience, not, not, you got, not, not james the, not the people here the fair, g-man there are a lot of people that are actually not you could say G-Man haters. And there are also even people in the audience who are, I, I saw cheering you on G-Man. So you can't, you can't paint with such broad brushstrokes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm talking I'm about not... the people that are leaving the comments, obviously the people that are leaving, I... you know, asking me about this, that, and the other, <laughs> their laws, you know, and... you got it. Larry doors, Muslim stepdad says, don't make me. <laughs> if it's not serious, you. I don't even want to hear it. Wait, is that is Larry Door like one of your friends? Like, how I, don't do you... want to, I don't even want to hear it if it's not serious. If they ain't got nothing to say about the debate, I'm not even answering. I'm just going to troll them. Well, hold on. This happens to be very serious, G Man. Just let me read this, right. and right. you can let me know if you think it's serious. This one coming in from Larry Doors, Muslim stepdad says, "Don't make me spank you like your sister, G Man." <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, G Man. Come on, it was a joke. We know that you didn't spank anybody. Okay. They also said, G Man not paying attention is why he got beat. I gotta say, G Man, I've never had a debater. I hate to give you a third degree here, ganging up on you. I've never had a debater who in the live chat of his own debate said the debate is boring. <laughs> but, well, we'll give you a chance to respond, G-Man. That no, um, yeah, basically it was one person talking. And I was just sitting here listening and I was listening to the same old... And and, and no disrespect. I mean, actually, can I get about three minutes to respond to this sure. if you don't mind? Fair. Uh, yeah, I'm used to debating against atheists and no disrespect to, to the to be people who are debating. If you would have just said you know, that science can't explain everything, you would have killed this guy. I don't know why you guys didn't say that to him. You guys should have said that there are other ways of going about proving that things are true. And you guys kept going with the science. So, you know, if I was on your side, that he he would have abandoned that science nonsense a long time ago, the moment <laughs> I would have brought up scientism or whatever. So the bottom let's line see, is, is that I was sitting here listening. Today. Well, I do actually pretty good in my debates with atheists. And honestly, I wouldn't have been talking as long as you guys would have been. I just wouldn't have. I would have pre them. That's what I would have did. And then it had been over. This one coming in from Stanley Williams. By the way, folks, I, in, in all seriousness, G-Man, are you still interested in a debate with – I could have sworn I actually had a fellow reach I out to I want to debate with T-Jump. I want to be, debate with T-Jump on whether or not God exists. That's what I want. Let's do it. I, well, I, I, I want to debate with him whether or not God exists or not. And I want him to try that scientism nonsense with me. 
We'll see what we can do. And I would love to do that. Set that up for next week, please. Stanley Williams, 19,000. <laughs> 19,000 K says, can G-Man steal man his opponent's arguments? No, he cannot. Can G-Man do what? <laughs> steal man, in other words, represent Arjuna and Siddharth's arguments yes, I in can, the most but I, charitable, but I'm not strong gonna, way. Yes, possible. I can, but I'm not going to do it. Nice. I have a girlfriend, but she's in Canada. <laughs> Why is it? So, G-Man, like, what if we, you know, we give you just like a few, you know, even if it's in a few sentences, like. No, I, I can do it, but I'm not going to do it. He's, he's That's my answer. General Zonfer says, under reincarnation, if you were a closeted man with bad fashion habits, Stephen Steen, would you come back as out, <laughs> proud, and stylish? <laughs> Next up, thanks for your so. All right, nobody yes, else. Answer, I was the only the one that took that one yes. seriously. Chris Gammon says, "I'm sorry, Arjuna. Are you saying that your current self isn't your real self, and that you used to be someone else who also wasn't you?" I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, and I don't think that it's that absurd of a concept. I mean, the fact that we are these bodies is really the absurd thing. Uh, as funny. No, it's not, not, not now, right now. I'll come in a few minutes. Uh, it's funny. Sometimes somebody's at, uh, giving a Harry Krishna lecture and there's like some people who are, you know, overweight there and they hear, oh, you're not the body and they're quite relieved. Um, so the idea that we have a spiritual identity, which, which is far greater than the one we have in this life is better. You got My kids it, are waiting to go to the beach. You got it, Anne. We only have several more questions. We're going to cruise through these. Stanley Williams, 19K says, G-Man was the resurrection, not reincarnation. No, the resurrection is not reincarnation. Reincarnation is when, when, when one person dies and their soul goes to be in another body. That's reincarnation. That was the resurrection. It gets confused a lot. The Hebrew Israelites do that a lot. It's a matter of a lot of false religions use reincarnation all the time. This so no, it was a resurrection. He rose from the dead. It's not reincarnation, not even close. Magellan from <clears throat> Singapore says, G-Man, can you roll back the toxic attitude? G-Man, do you think you were toxic? Do I think I'm toxic? That you, uh, were, that you were tonight. I think I think that I'm dope. That's what I think I am. Gotcha. I think I'm dope. Based and dope-pilled. Someone taught me what a sad yeah. boy is. My students taught me what a sad boy is in class the other day. We'll, we'll come back to that. Aaron the Savage <laughs> Sister says, Question for the panel, is a contract viable if it's legally not binding in any state or country? I like to answer that question, provided that they answer this question. Uh, do atheists exist? That's all I want to know. Do they exist? Yes or no? Yes. And are they and are they interested in little kids? And do we have evidence for that? Oh, that's one we need to worry about right there, don't we? Not as much as Catholics and Christians. Well, this is one dude all named right. Scientist we, Sam. Let's, let's you guys wait, hold on. Let's see. This, this debate has been civil that, while it was civil you know, for a while. So so we we must. Like, oh, please don't. Oh, no, 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 I just don't want to get our first strike. We don't have to go there. Okay, this is what coming in from Karag Nightwolf. We'll talk. We'll cue groups of that later. All right, Karag Nightwolf says. I'd rather reincar I'd rather reincarnation be true than Christianity. I don't know who wants to respond. That don't surprise me. It's pretty consistent <laughs> with scripture. Makes it actually proves the Bible correct at that point. On, yeah. Anybody who doesn't believe in Jesus is eventually gonna believe that anyway, so go figure. Me and a friend are working on an academic paper where we argue that reincarnation is a better form of purgatory and theology than the idea that you know, and then infernalism where after this body, that's it if you get it wrong, or uh, the you know the Christian universalism, which we can't make sense of because where you know if you're not perfect after you leave this body, where are you going to go? You're just going to go straight to heaven? Are you going to go to another kind of purgatory? Anyway. Anyway, David Anthony, you need to listen to that one because that was directed towards you. Anyway. Then uh, all of G-Man's enemies out there and Bubblegum Guns says, G-Man, I'm a polytheist. Would you want to debate me? No. Next, <laughs> you, you heard it. <laughs> Correct, Nightwolf says. Let's see, right, we got that one. Buddy from the outside chat says, can G-Man give an example of no. an analogy? <laughs> what? Yeah, I didn't even finish it, G-Man. 
<laughs> I'm trying to have fun. No, all my answers to them is going to be no, and it's going to be something weird. So no. Oh right, Magellan says, "Oh goodness," says G-Man needs to be booted. He is just getting worse now. I have a feeling that came in about th- two, maybe one or two questions ago. When G-Man booted, <laughs> yo, I would love for James to give me a million dollars. James, boot me, man. Give me a million bucks. Give me a million bucks. I would love that. that. Is that Wait, like the new what? cool way of saying How like booted work? means giving a million bucks? Yeah, it means you pay me. That's what it means. You pay me means I should get booted. I totally agree with you. I definitely will take that payment. That really definitely. is like the slang. If I, say, I, I like, I've never heard this new slang of the day. Yeah. Oh come on, G. Are you making this up? No, I'm serious. That is the new slang. Go oh. to the hood. You'll hear all about it, man. Booted it means you got to pay me. Is it like sad boy? It's like brand new. It's hot off the press. Have you guys sad heard about boy, what a sad boy okay, is? Okay, sad boy act is an interesting thing. You know what sad boy, sad boy is? Sad boy means, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Sad boy, he be busting a rhyme like crazy, man. You got to hear this new diss track <laughs> sad boy made about Miss Parker, man. All kinds of wonderful adjectives are going to be used about her. <laughs> what? Okay, last one. Thanks for your question. Buddy from the outside chat says, G-Man, did you thank Rev for the headset? I'm sure you did. G-Man's always polite. And also Th- want to let you, you know. Thank you, Rev. Th- th- thank you, Revelation News, for these headsets, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anyways, oh. let's go. So that is nice. if that's any of buddies of the outside. Uh, anyway, thank you, buddy, for reminding me, for giving permission for Rev for these things. Thank you, Rev. I mean, thank you. You got it, and thank you very much. We have to let these guys go. As what time is it there in Sirth and Arjuna? What time is it in each of your locations? Michigan. You're Michigan, you're in Michigan 11, Siddharth? Yeah, eleven thirty EST. And Arjuna, where are you? It's three thirty p.m. in Oakland, New Zealand. Can I say one more thing, uh, James, if you don't mind? Earlier, I yeah. was asked some questions, and I said I didn't know. That's called trolling, because I know what you guys are going to try to do that with later. It's trolling. <laughs> So I just want to let you know that I know what a misotheist is. I guess I can explain what these people's argument was, but I'm not going to do it because you guys don't care if I can do it or not. What's a misotheist? I care. A misotheist is someone that hates God. An anti-theist like yourself is somebody that hates religion, but you qualify for misotheism and anti-theism. You got it. <laughs> I'm, referring to, I'm referring to T-Jump, by the way, not, not the other people in here. T-Jump's the only atheist in the room, so... You got it. Juicy, to say the least. And also want to say, folks, our guests are linked in the description. Our vision here is to provide a neutral platform so that everybody has their chance to make their case on a level playing field. So we want to encourage you. Hey, can I promote my YouTube channel, please? Can can, can I promote my YouTube channel? Feel free. Thank you. Okay. Everybody that is here, I want everybody to go and subscribe to GTV. I got the dopest dish track in the world. That I'm uploading tomorrow, and it is directed towards this Jezebel named uh, Miss Parker. You got to check it out, yo. This woman is going to get owned, schooled, and everything else in the book. All right? The feuds never end. So, yes, that is linked in the description down below. With that, we are going to – I'll be back in a moment with updates on upcoming debates. This one we just finalized today at the bottom right of your screen, folks. Human rights versus Sharia law, which should we have? Muslim versus atheist. It's going to be a massive one. That's later this month. So, hey, folks, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And with that, I will be back in just a moment to let you know about other upcoming debates. And I forgot to mention, our guests aren't just linked here. Siddharth and Arjuna and Tom and G-Man are also linked in the description box for the podcast So you can check out their links there as well, and I'll be right back in just a moment. Thanks so much, G-Man, Tom Jump, Siddharth, and Arjuna. It's been a true pleasure. Thank Thank you, you, everybody. Thank you, Jump. Thank you, G-Man. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, James. We'll be back in just a moment.